right. I'm going to share my screen. I'm going I'm to start with the, um, you know, I gave you a discussion question a couple of weeks ago, and I said that I would answer those discussion questions. And I'm going to start there. So let me get that pulled up. Okay. Uh, I'm on the wrong browser. Now give me just a second. I'm going to have to switch over. I had my presentation pulled up in Safari, but I'm on a Google Meet. And um, Chrome, so it's not opening. But I can get it open if you just give me just a second. But anyway, um, after I go over um, the questions, I add them to... Um, the materials page in our class. So I'm, I'm, I got a couple of things to show you there too. It's just being, oh, there we go. Let me see if it'll work now. There we go. All right. So the first thing that I wanted to show you is on Schoology in the class on the materials page. All right. At the bottom, there are two things that I wanted you to know. One, I have a document here that says signs you should know and practice by the end of week six. So whatever strategy that you have for practicing, uh, you'll need to practice those. And so there's a list here. I think one of the words is misspelled, but I'll check that out and, and fix that. Uh, we'll go over a lot of these today. Uh, the ones that aren't, that we haven't done yet, we'll be doing next week. Now here is the answer to the questions that I have given you. Um, my, Last week, we talked about whether or not deaf people hear in their dreams. Um, and we talked about how do people who don't know sign language communicate. So let me talk about this week. So I go over two questions. All right. The first one is how do people who aren't deaf when they're born, how do they become deaf? Well, there's lots of different ways. One is uh, repeated and untreated ear infections, uh, especially with the smaller children because their ears are not formally, um, they're not completely formed. So it causes like little traps for moisture and it gives them lots of ear infections. And if they don't have adequate medical care to take care of those ear infections, it can damage their hearing. Uh, the second one is high fevers. As a young child, um, usually these are associated with, you know, strep throat, pneumonia, whatever. It doesn't always, you know, high fevers don't always cause hearing loss, but it can. Um, the third one is an accident with head trauma. Um, repetitive exposure to loud noises. Now, I think this one is interesting because I talked to an audiologist one time who said that your generation, those of you who are in school right now, We'll have 25% more deaf people in it than previous generations due to uh, earbuds and other, you know, video games, headphones, you know, things that will put those loud noises right up next to your ear. The way they explained it is that you have like these uh, hair in your ears, these hair fibers. You can't really see because they're microscopic. And, you know, think about like a, a field of wheat, so to speak. And if you walk across the wheat, it battens it down and it won't come back up. So, you know, something like really loud noise is the same as, as stepping on the wheat. So it's a similar situation. Um, now, I have heard that the same goes for like massive water retention. And I have personally experienced that, you know, whenever uh, one time I had a surgery and they had to 
pump me full of fluids. And then I had a massive hearing drop after that surgery. Uh, the next one would be a genetic progressive loss. Some people are born hearing, but due to some sort of genetic condition, they are will lose hearing as they get older, uh, which will be more than your normal person, <clears throat> which leads to number six, which is aging. You probably know that most of your older people uh, do have trouble hearing sometimes. And then the last one is uh, diseases such as diabetes. And some of those di those diseases that are pre prevented by the vaccinations that you take, like uh, measles, mumps, rubella, those kind of things. You know, if you catch those, they come with that high fever that ends up um, affecting your hearing. All right. The next one, next question someone asked is how do they sign so fast? And the answer to that is just plain practice. You know, it's their language, just like English is yours or Spanish may be yours. You know, they sign, they're native signers. So it just comes naturally to them, like speaking comes naturally to you. You don't have to think about it. You are not translating English from some other thought. You know, they're not translating, they're not thinking in English and translating in sign. You know, they're thinking in sign. So that's the difference. That's why they sign so fast. All right, so this week, uh, our next topic deals with careers. Now, if you are interested in pursuing a career in which you assist or know sign language in any shape, fashion, or form, here's a list of potential careers that you could go into as an adult. Uh, the first is a sign language interpreter, and these are people who translate English to ASL or ASL to English in various settings. Um, these could be at churches, doctor's offices. You know, sometimes they work for a company. Sometimes they they freelance. Uh, you know, you have people like my sister who um, signs at for comic book conventions. Uh, she also does concerts. She does you know like emergency management system when they when the governor. Of Mississippi gets on on the TV and starts talking about how a hurricane's coming, you know, she'll do that kind of stuff. Um, but she also has done stuff for the government, like yeah, a, a deaf person who is being interrogated for something involved with a crime of some sort. Uh, you could be a teacher. So these are people who educate um, the deaf students or they educate them, whether it's in a deaf school or in a public school. Uh, a speech pathologist. These are people who do like speech therapy. Um, they help a deaf person speak clearly and with an appropriate volume. Uh, you may take that for granted, but it's really hard to form sounds that you can't hear. And it's really hard to tell how loud you are because you don't have that, that volume control. All right, an audiologist. This is a doctor. They'll do tests. They'll take you in a sound booth and they'll try to see how many beeps you can hear or whatnot. Yes, hang on just a second. No problem. Does he have books? I don't think so. Unless you have books. Um, the white box has books in it, a bag of books. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so uh, they'll take you to the booth and they'll make you listen to beeps and raise your hand. And then they'll, they'll do a graph to let you know how well you hear. And one day I'll show you what those graphs look like, not today. Uh, psychologists. And therapists, these are people who work on the mental health needs. So you can imagine if you have a problem like depression or anxiety or, you know, um, PTSD, but yet there's nobody to talk to. So that's why, you know, psychologists and therapists who are in high demand, if they know how to sign or speak a second language, a second language is always helpful. Remember, ASL is not English. An employment counselor. These are people that are going to help deaf people find jobs and make sure they have the tools they need in order to do that job. You know, when I was in the classroom before coming to virtual, 
um, I had a light that flashed in my room whenever someone came over the intercom and started speaking or when the bells would ring. Um, I, I had one of those old traffic light situations where when the kids started talking too loud, it would go, you know, red would be like, you're way too loud. Yellow, it's like, you're a little bit too loud. Uh, they also helped me with some of my, you know, hearing aids or cochlear type situations for um, I use an employment counselor for that. Helps me pay for, to go to school even. All right, then you have social workers. These are people that will help them with their needs and community. So they might help them if they need food stamps or if they need childcare or if they need uh, Medicaid or WIC. You know, not every deaf person is going to be, you know, on the lower socioeconomic or have needs such as that. But if they do, then a social worker can help them make those connections, make sure they're, they're connected with schools. You know, there's all sorts of things that a social worker can do. Um, a child care worker, this is not like a teacher. This is more like um, daycare or after school, you know, those sorts of programs. All right, an occupational therapist. Uh, these are people that help deaf people learn how to do things that they want to do in their daily life. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be just deaf people. It can be blind people. It can be someone who has become a paraplegic or a quadriplegic, you know, something that stops them from doing what they want to do in everyday life. An occupational therapist is someone who helps them get around that. Uh, a voice relay service worker, this is called a VRS. Uh, these are people who translate for deaf people when they make phone calls. So what they do is they call a number or go through a system on the computer and type in the number of who they want to call. And the relay service worker tells who they're calling, what they're saying, and they sign what the other person is saying back. So they go, they're the in-between between whoever's making the phone call and who they're calling. All right, and then outreach deaf center worker. Now, these are people that, you know, maybe they have like a, um, just a, a kind of like a, a clubhouse, you know, it, it's just a center where they can come and they organize events and they kind of maintain, you know, a social meeting place for people who are the deaf community. Deaf community is really close, so it's important for them to have a place where they can socialize. So those definitions are on the matching activity for this week. So if you did not do well on your first attempt at that, you may want to uh, try that one again using these definitions. All right, so these are the signs that you should already know. So I'm not gonna go over these. You should know the ABCs. You should know the numbers one through 30. You need to know how to say, how are you, an appropriate response. So the appropriate response would be like good, bad, okay, so-so, fine, amazing. Those are some of the appropriate responses. Um, what is your birthday? And, you know, being able to say what your birthday is. So that goes with the months of the year. And signing what is your name and being able to say, like, my name is. So I'm going to um, stop sharing my screen. But I, I'm still recording, so let me stop. All right. All right, so we're going to do colors, and I have a list. So let me, oops. My list disappeared. Give me just a second. Because I don't, I want, I keep forgetting that orange is a color. And so that's why I had to make a list. I don't know why I keep forgetting orange is a color. All right, so the sign for color is, you know, you just wave uh, your fingers at your chin. So that's colors, colors. Let me see where my thing went. I got to open my list back up. Let's 
because I don't want to forget anything. I have quite a few things to go over. Okay, so signs for color. It is just your hand is wiggling at your chin. All right, I've seen red in a couple of ways. Most of the time I see it where they're, they're at their chin and they look like they're kind of like scratching their chin. But I've also seen it where they reach across their lips. You know, so red, red. Kind of like in reference to lipstick maybe, red. All right, blue is easy. If you just take a, a B shape and shake it. Green is a G that you shake. Purple is a P that you shake. Uh, yellow is a Y. White, I have no idea why. White is you start with and you pull forward. Let me show you. White. White. All right, black is a stripe across your forehead. Do not do this. This means summer. This means black. Black is a straight line across. Summer hooks into an S. I mean an X. Uh, and then if you do multiple X's, it's like dream or imagine. Uh, let's see. Oh, brown is... And I typically think of hair brown. Right, gray is you take your hands and you just you, you go back and forth. Gray. Pink, you know, red is a, a kind of like a stripe at your pink is you touch your chin with the pee finger. And then orange is like you're squeezing orange juice at your chin. No idea why you're squeezing it in your chin, but that's orange. So red, blue. Green, uh, purple, yellow, white, black, brown, gray, pink, and orange. Now, I have videos that go with this. So, um, in that pink folder, so that you can, you can go back and look at those if you, if you need to. All right. Want to hear something amazing? Oops. You can find hundreds of epic deals at Kohl's right now. Like Sonoma Tops for $10.99. Okay. Sorry about that. Now, the next one that we're going to go through are some conversational signs. Uh, I'm just going to go through some of the ones that are on the video from this week. You know, one of them that we talked about is hi. So, I, I can't see you at this point, and that's okay. But just follow along at, at your side. Hi, it's just like you just waving at somebody. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And y'all, I saw the Blues Clues thing this morning, and the last thing he did was thank you, and I almost cried. So, thank you. It's a lot like good, but good goes to your hand, and thank you. So, good, thank you. I'm looking at my list. Okay, help. It's like the A, help. It's like somebody's lifting you up. Help. Again, you have the, the bent hand. Again. Again. So, follow along with me. Again. Again. All right. If you do understand, you can just nod yes for yes, I understand. And then you do the, the idea finger. Yes, I understand. If you don't understand, then you do the no. Sh I, I don't understand. I don't get it. All right. Please is a flat hand. Please. Flat hand like this. The sorry is an S hand right there. All right, if you know something, it's that bent hand. Like, okay, I know, or I don't know. No, don't know. If you forgot, that's like it's completely wiped out of your mind. I forgot. You know, forgot. Now, if you remember, 
I'm at a weird angle here. You remember. It's like you take the A hand from here and you put it down here. You remember. Now, don't do it to um, a flat hand because that's like a letter or a postcard. It's the A to A. Remember. All right. You have finish. I teach this to little kids. Finish. You know, I ask them, are you all done? And they'll, um, they'll, they'll say, all done. Now, when you see an interpreter and they're signing a song or, you know, maybe a speech or something and it's over, they'll say it's done. That way the person knows to stop paying attention is over with. Um, the next one is a bathroom. So it's a letter T for toilet and then, and you shake it. So, so if you want to know where the bathroom is, you'll, you'll, you'll just look. And then somebody will point you to the bathroom if they know that that means bathroom. All right. Deaf. You point to the mouth and the ears because deafness usually affects both of those. Hearing is a circle. Hearing. Hearing. So deaf, hearing, and then you have hard of hearing, which is two H's for hard of hearing. So deaf, hearing, hard of hearing. And you have finger spelling. Finger spelling. It's like, I'm going to spell all the letters. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. All right. These are other good words to teach little kids. Yes and no. Yes. No. So a uh, shaking hand is yes. And then this is like N-O, N-O, N-O. But this is the shortcut. All right. Practice is an A. Back and forth. Practice. Practice. All right, ready. So this, you know, if you say it with a question face, it's like, are you ready? If you are asking someone if they have any questions, then you will draw a check a question mark in the um in the air. If you're saying ask me questions, then it's like you have the question hooks. And you know, ask, you know, they're coming from here, they're coming from there, asking me questions. All right, this one is probably one that you would want to do for me. Slow down. Right, let me show you my arm a little bit better. Slow down. Slow down. I, I'll have to look up where which one your dominant hand is because. I, I was taught how to sign by left-handers, and I'm right-handed, so I get confused sometimes. So, slow down. So, if you're talking to a um, a deaf person, and they're signing too fast, you can go, you know, whoa, stop, slow down, so that you can tell them that you're new, and that you need them to go a little bit more slower. So, it can mean slow or slow down. All right, the next one is right, right. So if you're right, it's like two pointed fingers. That's right. That's correct. Right. Wrong. I don't know why it's the why right here at the chin. Wrong. Um, stop. I do stop with my children at home and they're hearing stop. Yeah, I do. At home, I do stop, yes, no, and uh, done all the time. I'm like, I'm done. You know, and, and I sign it. I don't know why I do. I just do. But stop. It's like you karate chop your hands. Stop. If you want to tell them to go ahead, you do the bent hands. Go ahead. Wait. Wait. All right, wait. Those are the ones that I'm adding to our vocabulary list. Now, next week, I will add um, family members. And then I'm, I'll try to like slow down on some of the new vocabulary so that we can use it in context. 
You know, I want you to be able to describe people and things and you need the words to describe them. Um, so if you wanted to say that my grandma is 83 years old, you know, you need to know the, the basic parts of that. So my upcoming next week will be family. And then we'll start to take some of these things and put them together where you can try to start having a conversation with somebody receptive meaning that you can tell what they're saying expressive means you can respond well to them all right i'm gonna stop the recording if i can get my cursor back there we go